Hello, Flavor Family. I hope you're having a great day. It is Bobby and Art back at the grocery store, Whole Foods to be exact, here on the north side of Chicago to talk all things milk and butter, right? We're gonna go over to the dairy case and tell you from A to Z what you wanna look for when you're buying milk, grass-fed, conventional, organic, and butter. There's a lot of options now, way more than when I grew up, and I want you buying the best quality dairy to put in your body because dairy really matters. Before we go over there, hook me up. Subscribe to our channel, you guys. Every single week, three to four videos are dropping. Better yet, there's a bell icon right below the video. Enable all notifications because you do not want to miss a video when we go live, especially the live stream and the podcast links are down below too. The Flav City Shopping Experience. New videos every single Tuesday morning. We're going to shoot this video B-roll style under the radar because I do not want to get kicked out. All right, let us venture to the milk case here. I mean, just take a look what we have here. We have a lot of options for milk, you guys. It's not just about whole milk versus low fat. We have organic. We have grass-fed milk. We have milk with omega-3 fatty acids. We have a lot of options here. So what's the difference between organic and grass-fed milk versus the regular conventional milk like this? Well, that truth is a lot. Let's just start here with basic milk. I don't care if it's Whole Foods. I don't care if it's Dean. I don't care if it's Kroger. This is the kind of milk, in my opinion, you should stay away from, right? The, you can definitely do better by going to organic, but I'll talk about that in a second. This is what I call basic milk or basically Monsanto milk. And the, way I, the reason I call it Monsanto milk is because these are from cows that have an exclusive feed of GMO grain, corn and soy to be exact. I don't consume any meat, any dairy that has a strict feed of GMO grain because I think that leaches into the milk, leaches into the protein. Plus, this is the kind of milk that's really not good for you, good for the cow, or good for the environment. And why is that? Because if you can do one better, we go to organic milk. I don't care what brand of it, organic milk is better, and it's widely available, and it really isn't that much more expensive. There we go. One gallon for $6. So... Why is this better? By law, organic dairy cows have to be grass-fed and pasture-raised four months of the year. So they put these happy images on here. That's not exactly accurate, right? And why that's better to be organic is that at least the feed for this organic milk here is 100% non-GMO, which is really important. And their feed can't have any nasty pesticides in there. It has to have any approved USDA pesticides. But at least they're also treated a little more humane because these cattle here, in my opinion, these are like the mass feedlot cattle that don't really get a chance to roam. They never eat grass, which uh, cows are supposed to do. And the nutritional profile of basic milk, conventional milk, is not as high as organic. So I would really encourage you to go organic if you can because it's better for the environment, it's better for the farmer, and health-wise, you guys, nutrition is better. But we can actually do even better than that, and for that, let's come over here. In this case right here, this is the best-in-class milk, in my opinion. It is 100% grass-fed organic milk. We have a few varieties. This here is Maple Hill. We have Organic Valley, which is really nice. Heck, even Aldi now has grass-fed milk. And why is this better, in my opinion? Because these cows never eat grain. Cows are really not supposed to eat grain. They do it now because it's easy and cheaper. So it's better for the cow because grass-fed milk literally has the best nutritional profile of any milk out there. Compared to this milk, conventional milk, this grass-fed milk has higher omega-3 fatty acids, the really important ones. Look at this guy, look how strong he is, right? It also has higher conjugated linoic acids, which is really good for your heart. And think about it, grass-fed milk is not just better for the cow because they're pasture-raised, it's better for the environment. These cows are pruning the grass and mowing the grass all the time. They're stamping their hooves into the actual ground, creating water wells for the rainwater to get in. It's better for the farmer because the farmer is not in a nasty environment or like a mass you know, uh, commercial pen with the cows. And it's better for us because the nutritional profile is better. Whole Foods, Aldi, almost everyone has grass-fed milk. And it's not too bad. We're talking about a half gallon for $5.89 normally. Now, Reduced fat versus whole milk. We always go whole milk. Dairy is the kind of good fat that you want to get as much fat as possible. Doing yourself a disservice by getting reduced fat because you're reducing the amount of mega-3 fatty acids. And when you're getting whole milk, especially with yogurt, the yogurt combines with the fat to really satiate your hunger. So do not skimp on the fat. This is not the 80s and 90s where we're afraid of fat. We like this kind of animal fat, especially when it's grass-fed. 
Let's take a quick break from the video and thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. When I meet you guys, the number one question I get is, how do you become a vlogger, YouTuber, or Instagram? And it's websites like Skillshare that make that possible. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 30,000 classes and 7 million members. They have classes ranging in everything from how to be a YouTuber, how to work in business, design, art. Once you get the premium membership, it unlocks access to every single course. Right now, I'm taking a course in editing. I wanna brush up on how to edit videos in Adobe Premiere, but you guys, there are videos for everything. How to take food photography with your iPhone, how to become a YouTuber. There are no barriers to entry if you wanna be in the creation space right now, which is really exciting. So go on Skillshare, use my promo link down below. That unlocks a free two month all access premium membership. After that, it's about $10 a month, but I want you guys to follow your passions and it's websites at Skillshare that make that possible. So once again, check them out and thank you for sponsoring the video. Now, looking at this milk right here, it's organic milk with omega-3 fatty acids. Once again, you have the choice of reduced fat or whole milk. You go whole milk, we go organic. The thing is, Art, you've tasted this before with the omega-3. How's yeah. the flavor? It tasted a little weird. Right, it's got a little bit of a funky fish flavor. Fishy. For me, it's like keep the surf and the turf separate. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to get it in there, but leave it separate. Get a good omega-3 supplement or eat more salmon. But if you're going to get it, get the organic whole milk, omega-3 uh, milk. But I think it has a weird flavor. You probably don't want to get that. So down here at the bottom is a relatively new milk that I haven't seen. It's called Ultra Filtered Milk. And it's really interesting because what they do is they ultra filter it just like they would Greek style yogurt. And when you ultra filter it, you reduce the amount of sugar here. So it says sugar is reduced in half, which is really cool. And look at this. It actually has more protein because when you filter the milk, you reduce the sugar and you actually concentrate the protein. It's the same principle of making Greek style milk, which is why I say when you get Greek milk, I know some, this bothers some of you guys. Let me turn it the right way. I don't want to upset my faithful family members. When you get Greek style yogurt, a lot of the lactose is removed. It reduces the sugar and ups the protein. So look at this, same thing with the milk. 50% less sugar, 13 grams of protein. I wish they had grass fed, but if you want a higher protein, lower lactose, lower sugar milk, get the whole organic milk. That's the best you can get. There's also something called A2 milk, which they don't carry here at Whole Foods, but let's talk about that in another aisle really quick. Now they don't have it here, but A2 milk is really interesting because a lot of people who have uh, casein issues can drink A2 milk because it's all about the structure of the protein. So if you are casein sensitive, some people have success drinking that because it doesn't disturb your, uh, your tummy as much. The problem is I haven't seen any A2 milks that are number one organic, let alone grass fed. So if you don't mind having conventional milk, A2 could be something good, but I really wanna see organic or grass fed. You can get lactose free milk, but it still has the, uh, the casein in there. Now, sitting right next to me is something really interesting. I call it the Walking Dead zombie apocalypse milk. How does this milk here live on the shelf and the same uh, organic horizon milk live over there? It's all about pasteurization. Louis Pasteur, my friends, the ones in the actual chill chest over there are high temperature, short time pasteurization. These are ultra high temperature. So if we look at the expiration date here, we see, look at that. It's November, 2019. That's where we're at. What? Oh, <laughs> what's going on here? You, they better sell these really quick. Hold on a second. There we go. March, 2020. <laughs> I'll be dropping a note to the manager before we leave you guys. So it can last you six to 12 months. Not that one. Don't buy that one because it's ultra high temperature pasteurized, which is good because if The Walking Dead happens in real life, you might want to have some in these in the pantry. The bad news is that when you pasteurize at such a high temperature, you nuke all of the enzymes or any living nutrients in there. All you left have left is basically calcium water, which is nice, you know, but when you get the stuff that's in the chill chest, it's not quite as highly pasteurized and there are still some living enzymes in there. Talking about living enzymes, the best milk you could ever get is raw milk. Now, depending what state you live on, you have to go to a farm and be part of a cow share program. You don't have to do that. I know if you're in Utah, you can buy from anywhere. So in Illinois, we recently went down to all grass farms down in Dundee, Illinois. I had raw milk for the first time 
mind blown, you guys. It was creamy and thick and delicious. And that's beautiful because it's not pasteurized at all. It has all the living nutrients and enzymes in there. Same vitamin profile as this, right? When you pasteurize, you don't kill the vitamins. You just kill the living enzymes and nutrients. So I would highly recommend going to a reputable farm, trying the uh, raw milk. It's good and good for you. And if you want to feed your kids milk, that's really the best one because it could be grass fed and raw then it's best in class, unbelievable. All right, out of the corner of my eye, I spy one of my favorite non-grass-fed milks. This is a brand called Kelowna Supernatural. They're from Iowa, I believe, and they're pasture grazed, but it's not 100% grass-fed. But man, if you're gonna get organic milk and not grass-fed, this is the one to get. It actually has the cream on top because it's not super homogenized which I really like, and it's super high quality, comes from one family farm, you see, non-homogenized. So if you love that cream on top, if you're old school like me, you want that yummy fat, this is a great brand. I just wish it was 100% grass-fed. Well, goat milk is another milk that is very digestible for people who have casein issues because, once again, the fat globules are smaller and easy for your tummy to digest. I would go with full fat. This is a nice Middle East, uh, Middle East, a Midwest company called Leclerc. It's in Wisconsin, on Wisconsin. Uh, so I would get that if you have dairy sensitivities. Very, very good stuff. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Bobby just said this is a good brand. I bet I can get the uh, chocolate milk, right? The problem is we start talking about serious, serious sugars here. We look at this, there's 17 grams of added sugar for eight ounces. Once again, we're talking 17 grams of sugar, which is just over four teaspoons. Yes, four teaspoons of white sugar in one cup. You take something that used to be very, very good for you, and you turn it into liquid diabetes, in my opinion. If you want to make chocolate milk, get organic or grass-fed milk, add unsweetened cocoa powder and a little bit of stevia or monk fruit sweetener, boom, that's your chocolate milk that's sugar-free. This is not what you want to put in your body. Uh, we have a whole video about coffee creamers, so when we're done with this video, go check it out. But this is one of the best new coffee creamers in the grocery store. It's from an Austin company called Picnic. And why I love it is that it's made with grass-fed butter, grass-fed whey protein, MCT oil, and no sweetener. Use this for your coffee. We're talking about a supercharged creamer. Maybe mix it with a little bit of grass-fed butter. Hello, Bulletproof Coffee. But check out the video when we're done. There's a ton of information for dairy and non-dairy coffee creamers. Oprah might like bread, but I love butter, right? So there's a lot of butter options here, going from organic to cultured butter, to European butter, to Irish butter, to vegan butter. We're gonna talk about it all, my friends, including plant-based butter. But first, you have really two choices when it comes to butter. You have American style butter, like this, and you have European style butter, like this. Which one would you choose? Leave a comment down below, American or Irish? Pause the video. Now resume, I really hope you said Irish butter or European butter because it's all about fat. European butter has more butter fat. American butter has less fat, more water. We're talking about butter, guys. We're talking about fat, good quality fat. You want more fat. You don't want that water. Now, you also want to go organic or grass fed. So if you're going to buy the American for some reason, at least get organic. It falls under the same reasons as the milk. We want that non-GMO feed. Now, it's very interesting. We have solved the reason why the Irish Kerrygold butter is going up in price everywhere. It's because the U.S. imposed a 25% tariff on Irish dairy. Now, don't be confused. Even though it says milk from grass-fed cows on Kerrygold, Kerrygold abides by Irish dairy law, meaning it has to be grass-fed 80% of the year. The other 20%, they can be fed grain. We don't know if it's GMO grain or not, but it's a very inclement weather there in the winter. I understand it. It's still way better than the American style butter. The color of this is rich and yellow and the flavor is fantastic. I would buy this still at Costco. They sell a four pack of this uh, salted one. It's okay that it's salted. It's a sea salt. It's very mild. A four pack for $10.99. It's the best deal ever. Another good European style butter is Plurga. I don't think it's 100% grass fed, but it's very fatty and very high quality. And then Vital Farms, the pasture-raised egg company, is getting into the grass-fed butter game. It is pricey, you guys. And the color's not quite as rich as Kerrygold. I would just stick with Kerrygold. I don't really mind that supplemental grain feed because the flavor and the color is fantastic. This is French butter, I believe, President. 
uh, Kelowna here has some beautiful organic butter. And this is interesting. This is organic cultured butter. So the butter is inoculated with a bacteria and it gives it a funky kind of flavor. See right there, microbial cultures. This has a really nice, almost buttermilk flavor you put on toast or on a, like a cauliflower uh, wrap. That is fantastic. Now, careful with spreads. They don't have too many cruddy ones here, but Kerrygold actually makes a naturally softer butter that is cool because it is just cream and salt and somehow they whip it so it's spreadable. But there is another Kerrygold, I think it's called Kerrygold Spread with canola oil. You don't want that. A lot of the spreadable butters are loaded with palm oil and canola oil. Now, speaking of spreadable butters, this is a vegan butter called Earth Balance. And you'd think when you buy something that says olive oil, it would be olive oil. But we always read ingredients on this channel, right? So we look at here, it's actually a blend of palm oil, canola oil, safflower, extra virgin, and flax. So it's mixed in with palm and canola, which is horrible for you, highly processed oil. It also has natural flavors in here, which is artificial flavors. So any one of these guys is not good. And I've pretty much seen so many spreadable butters and vegan butters that are loaded with canola oil that's GMO and processed. You don't want that. There's a new one. Look at this, you guys. The company Milkadamia that makes the macadamia nut milk has a butter spread, but do not be lured. They're using canola oil, GMO, highly processed, highly inflammatory canola oil, and natural flavors. The best in class, by far, vegan butter or spread is Miyoko's. Miyoko's is a famous Japanese vegan, I believe. This is cultured European style butter. I wish it was made with Expeller Plus sunflower oil, but hey, sometimes I give a pass to vegan ingredients. This is amazing because it has that culture. See the last ingredient? So it has that funky cultured flavor. I swear, you close your eyes, you can't even tell this is vegan. This stuff is amazing. I think it's a little cheaper though at uh, Trader Joe's, but when it comes to vegan butter, this one wins the cake because the other ones use palm oil, nasty oils, and I would stay away from those. If you're wondering, Bobby, what about non-dairy milk and plant-based milk? You guys, we have a video all about every single plant-based milk. Check it out when we're done. Almond, pea, cashew, hemp, flax, oat. We got you covered. As usual, that info, that video has a ton of info. All right, Flay City family, that is it. Lots of information, right? There's so much that goes into dairy, specifically butter and milk, but I hope now you know what to look for when you're at the grocery store because quality really matters when it comes to dairy. What next, Art? You tell me. No, you guys. You guys tell us. I don't know, right? You vote. You decide. We make the videos. Please leave comments down below. Maybe I'll put a poll right here. You never know. More importantly, like, comment, share, subscribe. These videos are a ton of work to make. We frequently shoot from morning till night. Sometimes we get kicked out. You never know, right? That's Sometimes what makes it don't. fun. Sometimes we don't. Two more videos below us right now. But Art and I will see you very soon. By the way, Art's rocking the Garth look today with his flannel look. Huh? <laughs> We will see you very soon. Until then, we say unto like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace from the north side of Chicago. Oh, 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 ah. <laughs>